And in the NFL, the Las Vegas Raiders have made it clear they are here for more than just football. The Silver and Black having pledged $1 million to help the Silver State fight COVID-19. And now, as Jesse Merrick tells us, a few young Raiders are stepping up to share the workload. What's up, everybody? Alec Ingold here, partnering with Three Square Las Vegas. I got a few of my guys. We got Josh Jacobs, Hunter Renfro, Foster Morrow. We're all doing some fundraiser here. Uh, $20 to Three Square will feed 60 people. No doubt a big impact in a time like this. And if you do throw down at least a 20 spot, you'll be entered into a raffle for a virtual meet and greet with some of these young Raiders who are looking to do their part for their new city during this pandemic. Reaching out to the guys, you know, Hunter, Josh, uh, Foster, everyone was like, oh yeah, for sure. Like, let's let's do this uh, as much as we can help. Everyone was really, you know, helpful, impactful, and, you know, hopefully it turns out to be something cool. Look, you know these guys are competitive, so they've challenged each other to see who can raise the most money to support Three Square's Coronavirus Emergency Food Fund. All you have to do is go to threesquare.org slash Ingold, Jacobs, Moreau, or Renfro, depending on whose page you want to donate to. And then after the week, they'll add it up on Friday, April 17th, and see who wins. For now, Renfro's starting to run away with it, but Ingold hopes you guys can help him change that. Uh, Foster and I are, are trying to scrap and claw our way up there. Um, we, knew jo we knew Josh and Hunter were going to run away with it, but uh, it, it was cool just to get everyone involved and see the overall impact and then if somehow I can sneak up there, I'm, I'm going to definitely talk some trash. No doubt that's trash talk we can all get behind. Reporting for News 3 Sports, I'm Jesse Merrick. More than a hop, more than a skip, sometimes even more than a jump away. But nothing, not even a pandemic, could stop the Easter Bunny. Uh, I know having two kids that are stuck at home, they're asking a lot of questions that we can't specifically answer for them. And so the kids pick up on that. And we really wanted the kids just to see something come to their house that gave them, okay, wait, this is all right. Things are okay here. Chris Purdom had the idea to okay, extend his family day. tradition oh, to Hi, other families so who might be stuck guys. inside. Every year I dress up as the Easter Bunny at home. Uh, I have two young boys, and so this year they were very concerned because of the coronavirus that the Easter Bunny would not be able to make it. So not wanting his two boys to miss the bunny, he decided to dress up. But how many kids are worried the Easter Bunny won't make it this year? Purdom decided he needed to help, oh, awesome. and he needed help doing it. He recruited volunteers, bring signs, bring eggs, bring anything. Only one rule, abide by social distancing. For volunteers first, and that generated interest, and we had a generous and enthusiastic support from the Girl Scouts of Southern Nevada. They donated a couple of volunteers that really brought things together. I had a couple friends that helped out, and they posted on their Facebook walls. And so we put a sign up on our work website, and then whoever wanted to come just asked for a visit. They sent us their address, a text that we could text them at before we arrived, and gave them a very large window, which we felt bad about, but everybody was at home, so, uh, and everybody was there. Everybody had a great time. The kids got a visit. Volunteers got a chance to see smiling faces, parents got a bit of a break, and everyone got something we need now more than ever, a sense of community while we isolate Thank at home. You. On Easter Sunday, John Trin, <laughs> News you. 3. Thank you so much. You may have seen this rare light display around the Las Vegas Valley tonight. The prayer warriors, 10 church congregations, part of a prayer caravan surrounding the Las Vegas Valley on the 215 Beltway in honor of Good Friday. Praying for people's health, praying for our first responders, praying for the people that are in the health field. Pastor David Walker and members of the Real Life Church had their headlights and flashers on in support as they took off on the Far Hills ramp. Drive around the route and... Uh, and, and nobody's going to be out of their car, so we're maintaining the, what the governor has required of us. This is just one of many creative ways they have been able to follow their faith during COVID-19. Easter Sunday will be no exception. We're uh, doing a video service. Uh, we'll have really pretty much all of the elements that we would normally do in a uh, Sunday service. Passover celebrations also looking a little different this year, including for Marcy Murdoch and her congregation at Temple Beth Shalom. We're using Zoom and Facebook Live to do Passover seders, to do Shabbat services, classes, 
uh, with the rabbis. Murdoch says faith is a powerful tool at such a challenging time. During these kinds of difficult situations, people do turn to faith and their roots to look for answers and some connection to people. And she believes there are some positives coming out of all of this. What we found is an uptick in participation. It may be that people can't get to us for services um, or have other things going on in the morning and early morning minion prayer services. And we're finding that many more people are checking in through Zoom and Facebook. With the continuing message that we are all in this together. Whatever faith that you are, I think people aren't finding why that's important in their life. One of the things that all of us human beings are made for is hope. We need, we need to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Reporting in Las Vegas, I'm Tiffany Lane for News 3. Oh, got to keep. Yeah, that's right, Gerard. You know, Lika Andrews works right here at Nellis Air Force Base. He's in the ICU and he is treating patients with COVID-19 pretty much on a daily basis. Now, he said that RV was set up so he could distance himself from his family to not spread any germs that it might come in contact while he's doing his job. But now it is gone. Malika Andrews is one of our heroes. In the intensive care unit at Nellis Air Force Base. He's a nurse practitioner treating patients with COVID-19. Definitely intense and stressful. But when he comes home, there's another stress on his mind. If his job is putting his loved ones at risk. One mistake you could you know, easily transmit it to and bring it home to my family. His fiance Alexandra or something like this says he fully decontaminates himself before walking through their front door. Just been hugging with like hand signals, you know, no touching, nothing like that. But Alika's worried it's not enough. Knowing that I was the the reason and the the process of it being transmitted to them. So Alika turned to his family's R V. He planned to live there temporarily for their protection. Reduce the, you know, the, the amount of contact I had with my family. But then... And I received a text message from my fiancé and from my mom saying that the RV was gone. Someone, says Alika, seemingly drove the gray, travel-sized RV out of the storage facility lot where it was parked. We kind of feel violated in a way. But they aren't angry. I want to let that person know that, you know, they are in our thoughts and prayers. They're extending forgiveness to the thief and say all they want is the RV back, no questions asked. We hope that they find a means to whatever it is that caused them to do this. 